These devices are capacitors. They are an essential component of many electronic circuits. They range in size from tiny etchings on a microchip to huge devices used to stabilize high voltage transmission lines. Despite their various shapes and sizes, all capacitors have a similar function. I'll demonstrate that function with this electrolytic capacitor. This type of capacitor is polarized, that is, it has positive and negative terminals. Not all capacitors are polarized. The negative terminal is indicated by this arrow on the side of the casing. To charge this capacitor, we connect it to a power supply, in this case a 9 volt battery. If you're not familiar with the board I'm using, check out our video on electronic breadboards. Briefly touching the leads of the battery to the capacitor, plus to plus, minus to minus, creates an electrostatic charge in the capacitor. I'm taking care to ensure the leads from the capacitor don't touch. This would create a short circuit. With the capacitor charged, I can remove the battery and connect the capacitor to a load. I'm using a 2200 ohm resistor and an LED. The current limiting resistor is essential. The low internal resistance of the capacitor and the 9 volt charge will damage an LED. The charge in this capacitor lights the LED for a few seconds. With a meter connected to a charged capacitor, we see the voltage is just over 8 volts. Completing the circuit, the voltage rapidly drops as the charge depletes. Notice the rate of discharge slows as the voltage drops below 2 volts. This is a function of the threshold voltage of an LED, the minimum voltage needed to move current through the device. Capacitors store energy electrostatically. They basically work like this. There are two conductive plates, separated by an insulator or dielectric. The conductive plates are sometimes aluminum. Briefly connecting a battery to the terminals of the plates allows electrons to flow onto one plate and off of the other. Removing the battery traps this imbalance or charge on the plates. Connecting a load like a lamp to the terminals allows the electrons to flow restoring electrical balance and causing the lamp to glow. The metal plates in this type of capacitor are actually created with a double coil of aluminum foil. The unit of capacitance is the farad, named after Michael Faraday, an important 19th century scientist. This unit is represented by a capital F. The farad is a large value, it is common to break it down into smaller units. The millifarad, which is one one thousandth of a farad, and the microfarad, one millionth of a farad. Even smaller units are the nano and picofarad, representing one billionth and one trillionth of a farad. The value of electrolytic capacitors is usually printed on the side. This is a one microfarad, rated at a maximum of 50 volts. This capacitor has a capacitance of 220 microfarads, rated at 16 volts, and this unit has a capacitance of 1000 microfarads, rated at 16 volts. The voltage rating is the maximum voltage that can be applied to this device. Exceeding this value can cause a serious and potentially dangerous failure of the capacitor. Circuit designers typically stay well under the rated voltage. Again, these arrows indicate the negative terminal. Not all capacitors are polarized. We can visually compare the output of capacitors with different values. This is a 100 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. This is a 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. I charge both of them with a 9 volt battery, a voltage well under their rated values. Then, start them both discharging at the same moment. The 1000 microfarad capacitor powers the LED considerably longer. 
This is the symbol commonly used for capacitors in a circuit diagram. If the capacitor is polarized, the polarity is indicated with a plus sign. There are variations on this symbol, but they are all very similar. Capacitors can be combined in series and parallel to create different values. These capacitors are connected in parallel. The value of capacitors connected in parallel is simply the sum of each capacitance. Here we have a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 220 microfarad capacitor connected in parallel. Their combined value is simply 100 plus 220 microfarads. 320 microfarads. Calculating the combined value of capacitors connected in series is a little more complicated. These capacitors are connected in series, end to end. To calculate equivalent capacitance, you need to know how to manipulate this formula. In this example, we have two capacitors connected in series. C1 is 100 microfarads, C2 is 220 microfarads. There are only two capacitors involved here, so the formula reduces to this. Plugging in the numbers, we get this. The equivalent capacitance is 68.75 microfarads. Knowing how to combine capacitors in series and parallel can be useful if you need a specific capacitor and don't have one in your parts drawer. Capacitors perform a variety of functions in electronic circuits. Capacitors, combined with resistors, control the frequency of the flashing LED on this 555 circuit. They are also used to reduce ripple in DC power supplies and they are key components in frequency filters, such as circuits used to reduce the 60 cycle hum that often affects audio amplifiers. Possibly the tiniest capacitors exist by the millions in computer memory. DRAM memory uses the charged or discharged state of a microcapacitor to represent the off or on state of a single bit the familiar ones and zeros of the binary number system. Capacitors can be dangerous. Don't experiment with these devices unless you are familiar with safety procedures when working with electronic components. Capacitors in a device can remain charged even when the device is unplugged, creating an unsafe situation. We have more electronics related videos at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.